1858, this pretty famous dude named Abraham Lincoln gave a speech, and in that speech he said, A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this nation cannot permanently endure half slave, half free. We're going to look at how the nation got to the point where Lincoln said it could no longer endure to be divided. The story all begins with westward expansion and slavery. As we already studied, the United States grew during the 1800s quite a bit through the Louisiana Purchase, through the war with Mexico, adding Oregon and California to the country. There's all this new open territory. To southern southerners in the United States, that open territory was a gold mine. They land that existed in the southeastern United States was already full. Um, it was already being, cotton was already being grown on it, and southern plantation owners looked to the west to continue to expand cotton growth. So there's all this fertile land in the west, and there's many to be made in growing cotton. So southerners wanted to move out west and take their slaves with them and start more cotton plantations. The big issue became, should these new territories have slaves? Um, slavery was starting to be abolished in the north, and still existed in the South, so Northerners didn't really want there to be slavery expanding out into the West. And then there's another question. What would happen if there were more free states than slave states? If all these new territories entered the country as free states and didn't allow slavery, eventually there would be more free states. And could they possibly, with a majority vote, overturn slavery? The South was very scared about that. So adding new states to the country became a major issue. The first time this became an issue was in 1820. And the newly settled territory from the Louisiana Purchase, this territory here that I'm kind of circling with my mouse cursor, some of those territories now wanted to become states. The main one was Missouri. So if Missouri was added to the country as a free state, the free states would have more. So this is the way it ended up working. It was called the Missouri Compromise, and it put off the issue of slavery for a while. The United States decided to add Maine as a free state and also add Missouri as a slave state. That way the balance of power between slave and free, it wouldn't be a problem. And then they made a line called the Missouri Compromise Line that said anything north of that line would be a free state and anything south of that line would be a slave state. So any new states added to the country wouldn't be a problem. Let's take a closer look. So you can see the green states representing the free states, the red states representing the slave states, if you add Maine, which had previously been part of Massachusetts as its own state, while also adding Missouri over here as a slave state, you pretty much keep the same number of slave and free states, so it's about equal, so no side has more power in Congress. Then this line here is set up that says anything north of it would be free, anything south of it would be slave. You start to actually divide the country in half by making a line. This compromise worked and kept the two sides happy in 1820. However, it wouldn't solve the overall problem. By 1850, more land had been acquired. California, all of New Mexico, Arizona from the war with um, Mexico, Texas had been added to the country. So now these new territories want to become states. And how that same problem that happened with Missouri pops up again in 1850 with California. So there was another compromise made in 1850 called, very simply, the Compromise of 1850. And this compromise was a little bit more complex, however. First of all, California was added to the nation as a free state. There would be no slavery allowed in California. The unorganized areas that hadn't yet applied for statehood of New Mexico and Arizona, people in those territories could vote. It was called popular sovereignty. And if those territories voted to have slavery, then it would be allowed. If they voted against it, it wouldn't be allowed. People kind of liked that idea, even though it was sort of a bad one, as we'll see later. Northern members of Congress are going to also vote for a Fugitive Slave Act to be passed, and that would keep the Southerners happy. The Fugitive Slave Act is going to allow Southern slave hunters to go north in search of runaway slaves. Because of this law, no black American is going to be safe from slave hunters. So let's take a look at the map and sort of see a little bit closer here. This is what the country looks like in 1850. And this Compromise of 1850 is going to add California over here as a free state, and to make the Southerners happy, you are going to open up this territory here, Utah and New Mexico, to possible slavery if the territories vote for it. That's called popular sovereignty. And in addition to that, the South 
is going to get the Fugitive Slave Act passed, which is going to allow them to go and hunt their runaway slaves, even if they make it into the North. Finally, in 1854, the issue pops up again with the Kansas and Nebraska Act. Kansas and Nebraska were supposed to be free states based on the Missouri Compromise. However, this act is going to abolish the Missouri Compromise line that had previously been agreed to in 1820, and the territories of Kansas and Nebraska are now going to be decided by popular sovereignty, which means those territories can vote if they want slavery or not. This is going to open up the possibility of slavery where before it wasn't possible. It would have been against the law based on the Missouri Compromise. Now, the reason this law is passed is because the Southerners, knowing that Kansas and Nebraska weren't going to have slaves in it, refused to allow to give the votes to establish Kansas and Nebraska as territories, which would eventually make them states. The Northerners, especially um, Douglas from Illinois, Stephen Douglas, they wanted to build a railroad, the Transcontinental Railroad, that would make them a great deal of money through the middle of the country. They couldn't do that unless Kansas and Nebraska were organized into territories. So they agreed to let slavery possibly be in Kansas and Nebraska. In exchange, the South would allow the territories to be organized and the North would get a railroad built across the North. So that would be very good money-wise for the North. So in a way, the Kansas and Nebraska Act was made because of a corrupt deal um, based on Northern senators who had interest in the railroad getting a lot of money. However, it opened up slavery to where there wasn't any possibly before. So you see, this is where the Missouri Compromise line was. And now these territories, which were supposed to be free states, could now have slavery in them. This is going to lead to some major problems, as you'll see in the next video. But look at the country here. Half slave, half free, with more slavery possible here. It really looks like two different countries at this point. As Lincoln said in his speech um, only four years after this law was passed. So in conclusion, by 1854, virtually two countries exist, the South and the North. The compromises over slavery have kept the nation together. But what, at what cost? Popular sovereignty and the fugitive slave law are both things that are going to threaten to tear the nation apart, as you'll see in the next video. Popular sovereignty allows voters to decide slavery. These elections are eventually going to bring violence and bloodshed.